All right, team, welcome back to the channel. Who are the dark horses for the Rugby World Cup? We're going to spend a lot of time over the next few weeks talking about Ireland, South Africa, France, New Zealand. Outside of that, though, which teams are worthy of being in the discussion for who could be dark horses? That's what I'm going to be looking at in this video. Also, for those of you that have missed it, there is a Rugby World Cup Fantasy Rugby League, which is the free game that the World Cup have released. There is a, a league on the channel. If you go and find the video, and I'll make sure as well I put in the comment section the code to join the league, do join up. It's going to be a good laugh, a little bit of fun. I'll be doing a few videos throughout the World Cup to do talk about my selections, just something a little bit different rather than just always talking about the games. But let's get into it. So who are dark horses? Do you know what? When I first started thinking about this, and I think now there are some dark horses, at first I was like, are there any? Genuinely. Like, are there any genuine dark horses that it would be a real shock if they got to a certain stage or if they got certain results? And I suppose to a degree, it's about how you define a dark horse. Would Georgia be a dark horse if they're able to get a couple of wins? If Argentina get to a quarter final, is that enough for them to be a dark horse given the side of the draw they're on? So it does kind of depend on, on how you define it. I put this question up on the uh, community tab section of this page. It might have popped up in a few of your feeds, but just asking who people thought. The vast majority of votes so far, and admittedly uh, didn't post it too long ago, it was about an hour ago, but 60% of the votes so far are for Argentina. Argentina, 11% for Australia, 28% for Fiji, 2% have gone for Georgia, and then just 1% have gone for other, which is quite interesting. So I'm going to run through a few of the different teams, really. It's good to be able to, to chat about them. One team I wanted to throw at you straight off the bat, though, and a lot of you, I think, might say that they're not dark horses enough, but that was Scotland for me, because... Because of the group they're in with South Africa and Ireland, it is being widely discussed as the hardest pool in the history of the Rugby World Cup. It's absolutely brutal. But given that the way Scotland play and how they try to move the ball to space, they look to attack out wide, they can put points on teams really, really quickly. It, it wouldn't be a complete shock if Scotland are able to upset a few people in that group. And then if they're able to get through it, who knows? And I think most of you would probably say, well, let's even say they get through the group. Are they going to beat the All Blacks or the French? Probably not. So looking like a, a good outcome for Scotland would be a quarter final exit. Is that enough to call them dark horses? But I just wanted to throw their name in there because for many people, they're kind of forgotten about because we expect Ireland and South Africa to go through. But in terms of the quality of that team, I think they do have the potential to upset a few people. But granted, I probably accept many of you will say that Scotland are just a little bit too established to be able to consider dark horses. So let's get on to Argentina, who I think are going to be many people's favourites, as I just said, looking at the early voting for the poll I put up. Argentina, I suppose, in the history of the World Cup, if we look back to 2007, if we look at what they did in 2015, they're probably the team who have the best track record to have a deep run at the World Cup. I mean, in particular, when you look at the side of the draw they're on, as I've mentioned already, if they beat England on that opening weekend, which I think is very, very possible, then they're looking at a quarter final against Australia, Wales or Fiji. They'll back themselves to win that. Then they've got themselves into a semi-final and they've went pretty close against the Springboks recently as well. So Michael Checker in Argentina, he's had a really good impact on that team. I was at Twickenham last year when they beat England at Twickenham. They've got Buffelli at fullback who will kick their goals. They've obviously got a decent forward pack, but with the likes of the Carreras boys and various others in that team, they have, I think, enough quality to be able to, to go deep in the tournament. And I think that's what they'll be aiming for. They'll be aiming to get the win over England. And I think they will think there is a realistic prospect of having another kind of historic run at a World Cup, the like of which we saw in 2007 when they came third. So Argentina are a good answer. They're a popular answer. They're also maybe one of the more obvious answers. Who else have we got in there that could be a dark horse. Well, let's talk about Fiji. Everyone's second team, let's be honest. If your nation isn't playing and Fiji are playing, you want the Fijians to win because of the brand of rugby they play. And also, I think, because of their contribution to rugby generally. In fact, that could be extrapolated to Tonga and Samoa as well in terms of the quality of rugby player those islands produce compared to their population is absolutely staggering. They are a conveyor belt of brilliant rugby players. And there's starting to be a little sense, partly because of the eligibility rules 
uh, changing and the likes of Stephen Luatua and Lima Sopoanga for Samoa or Malachi Fekatoa for Tonga or Charles Piertau, because those guys have been able to change their allegiance and play for the islands again, there's maybe just this feeling that there is a chance for the Pacific nations to really start to do something. And then I think in Fiji's case as well, you look at the Fijian Drua in Super Rugby having a genuine viable professional team on the islands for, for players. It seems like they're starting to build. I think within Fiji, they would expect to see the benefits, particularly of the Drua, maybe for the next World Cup in 27. But after they won at Twickenham, I think a lot of people are excited about what they can do. And that's well-founded as well, because it's not just the fancy offloading unbelievable athleticism, the stuff that we maybe associate with Fiji in particular from their sevens team. Their scrum is improving, their ball retention is improving, their set piece generally, those kind of less glamorous fundamentals of the game is something that Fiji are targeting. So given the fact that they're in with Wales and Australia and who knows what we're going to get out of those two teams. I mean, with Eddie Jones' side having lost all five games so far this year, Wales and Warren Gatland are clearly in a rebuilding phase in terms of the squad he's selected. I know there's centurions thrown in there, the likes of Dan Bigger, Liam Williams, um, you know, the experience of Talupe Falatau, Lee Halfpenny. It's still a pretty young and inexperienced Wales team, so we don't really know what we're going to get from them. I think Fiji will feel confident of getting through that group. They've already beaten England. If that's who they face, they will maybe think that they could go historically far in this tournament. So I think Fiji are worth another mention as well. And the final team I wanted to mention is Georgia. And again, it depends how you define dark horses. I don't think Georgia are necessarily going to go too far in the competition, but they do have a style of rugby, I think, that could, if a game is tight and if they can rely on that set piece late in games. That is the sort of style of rugby that can get you over the line in matches. Can they start to, to have more of an impact on the top, top level of the game? They want more opportunities against tier one nations. We saw them beat Wales in Cardiff last year. And actually that was a great example of what I'm talking about in that it was a tight game and that second row, the replacement, uh, second row, the replacement front row came on for Georgia and they absolutely monstered Wales. They were just, dominating them at the scrum. They were getting penalties and they were able to control the closing stages of that match. They kicked their goals. And also actually in the Georgian back line, I suppose the scrum is the, the scrum's what we associate more with Georgian rugby. They got some brilliant backs. They got a lot of guys that are playing top, top tier club rugby and can be pretty exciting out wide. So I'd love to see Georgia do something. Uh, as I say, I don't think that's necessarily going to be a run late in the competition, but maybe if they can pick up a win or two in the group stages and kind of establish themselves a little bit more, I think that would be a pretty good World Cup for Georgia. So who are the dark horses? Well, I think the most honest and most obvious answer is probably Argentina at this stage, based upon what we've seen in 2023. Fiji are maybe there or thereabouts as well. Outside of that, who knows? What do you make of my Scotland shout? Is that just too obvious? Is Scotland too good? They can't be considered dark horses or because of the pool they're in. Actually, it's kind of a fair shout. You can let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel as well. The World Cup is getting nearer and nearer, people. I'll see you in the next one.